Las Vegas might sound like an improbable place to vacation when you live in Miami Beach, one resort to another. But to Bunny Yeager and her husband, Bud Irwin, their home is where they work. So they decided to see the country, relax for a couple of weeks, and enjoy themselves without the phone ringing or models arriving all the time, hoping to be photographed for the glamorous national magazines. Bud is very understanding about having a wife who's a photographer. But this year, he talked her into taking a vacation with him. They left the children with their grandparents, and they're alone together with nobody to bother them for the first time in years. Nobody but me, that is. I'm the guy with the purple shirt. I meet all the celebrities. I introduced myself to Bunny this afternoon and tried to interest her in doing some photographic work in connection with some of the hotels in Las Vegas. But her husband made it very plain that they are here strictly on vacation. They were supposed to meet me this evening so I could show them around Las Vegas. Somehow, though, I had the impression they would rather be by themselves because they weren't there when I went back to the motel at 7 to pick them up for dinner. But I shouldn't have any trouble finding them. I know a lot of valuable people like Pops. I know all these showgirls, too. They got a lot of respect for a sharp operator like me. Well, that one must be new in town. Las Vegas has mushroomed in the last few years. More resort hotels line the strip. Crowds of people pack the numerous gambling casinos. And the flavor is no longer small town, but that of a glittering city, brazenly beckoning you to let down your hair, try your luck, see the top entertainers in the country, and enjoy the hospitality of the West. I found Bunny and Bud with no trouble. It was easy because they went to all the obvious places. I became their guide just like I'd promised and I started showing them my system for winning at the dice tables. But Bunny decided to play her own hunch and bet exactly opposite of my advice. And to Bud's amusement, she began to win. Of course, I would admit that I might be wrong about my system, and I assured them it would pay off in a big way as soon as I calculated everything. Some girl that they knew from Miami stopped at the table. She seemed upset about something and took Bunny off to talk to her. Except for this one problem, he's dead set against gambling. He thinks it's wrong. But I didn't know you gambled. I don't. At least I haven't, except one night three years ago and tonight. Well, then I don't understand. It started out to be more of a joke than anything else when we were here on our honeymoon. Champagne, moonlight, tinsel, and love. Getting married seemed to be the rightest thing in the world that could have happened to both of us. Well, anyway, we started to celebrate, and we visited all the casinos. Jack wouldn't gamble. 
but he seemed to get a big charge out of watching me. I guess I was pretty funny. I'd never been in a gambling hall before in my life. Well, anyway, I lost a little over $10,000. I felt terrible about it. I didn't realize the value of the chips. It just all seemed like fun to me. But then when I found out how much money I lost, it ruined everything for me. Well, that is a lot of money to lose. It wasn't the money so much. Jack's business does very well but he built it up on a lot of hard work and good sense. And he has this thing about gambling, like it's a sin or something. Well, why did he let you gamble in the first place when he disapproved so strongly? Well, at the time, I guess it didn't seem to matter to him. I don't think he wanted to spoil my good time. Then I don't understand why you think he'd make such a fuss over $1,000 now. Because I've come to realize the significance of his feelings about it. Gambling is the only thing he lectures about. I just can't let him know what I've done. I know it will hurt him terribly. Yet you planned a vacation in Las Vegas? Well, we had our honeymoon here. And we both wanted to come back here to spend our anniversary. I think you're taking this all too seriously. It is serious because I love him. I didn't want to gamble. It was lonely sitting up in that room and... Bunny, I don't want to bother you with my problems. Wait. Now it's our problem. Sit down. There is a way I might be able to help you, if you're interested. Of course I'm interested. What is it? You remember, I've asked you several times to pose for me in the past. Actually, I was rather disappointed that you weren't interested. I think that you have a quality that would register beautifully on film. But I'm no model. And I wouldn't know what to do. That doesn't matter. Look, you asked me to help. The least you can do is listen to what I have to say. The magazines that pay the most money are all those that are looking for the same kind of glamour that you have. I know of one in particular that pays the model $1,000. I could call the editor and perhaps get the assignment right away. When is your husband coming in? He won't be here until Thursday. But I can't do that, Bunny. He'd really blow his stack. Well, I've already thought about that. I could photograph you in such a way that you'd never be recognized. Not even if Jack saw the photos. Do you have other reasons? No, I don't think there's anything wrong with that kind of work. Are you sure you could get the money before he gets here? Well, I can if you'll make up your mind. Peggy, let me say this. I wanted to photograph you before because of your natural charm and your good looks. We could do this job and it could be great for both of us. Why don't you sleep on it and come by the pool in the morning and let me know. Thanks a lot, Bunny. No matter what I decide, I appreciate your trying to help. Come on, let's join the boys. So I stayed up a couple hours after I dropped you off last night and I figured out what's wrong with the system. I think your system's great. Well, I'm glad somebody appreciates it. You just don't know how to use it. My own system, I don't know how to use it. Does that make sense, bud? Well, I don't know, Charlie. She won on the crap table last night and you didn't. She wasn't even there half the time. You gotta be there and concentrate to make a system work. Huh. Listen, the only reason she won is because I was there, concentrating all the time. All right, I concede. I won because you were there. You placed the bet and I bet against you, and I won. Even after that session with Peggy and her telling me all her troubles, I still went back, bet against your system, and won. <laughs> Women. Listen, buddy, I'm delighted to take the time to show you around town, to lend you the benefit of my experience, and even to use my own money to, so you can win at that dice table. But don't insult me, please. I'm sensitive. Buddy, he's right. He has showed us around town and helped us a lot. We shouldn't make fun of his gambling system. Oh, I'm sorry, Charlie. I, I didn't mean to offend you. It, I know what trouble you've gone to to be of help. Here's what I'm going to do. Each time I win, when I bet against your system, I'll give you 10%. Oh, that's it. That really does it. Listen, Bunny, I can take a lot, but please, you might consider my pride. <laughs> what a bill. I'm going to pick up today's forms. Good morning.
morning, Peggy. You're looking well. Thank you. Hi, Bunny. Hi. Hey, Bunny, about that little matter. Um, uh, I guess it would be all right if you opened a little account for me. But instead of making it 10%, let's make it $10 every time you win. Okay? Well, okay. Later. What was that all about? Well, Bunny's little friend just outsmarted her. Well, not really. Well, Peggy, did you make your mind up yet? I guess I'll have to do it if I want the money. Well, then let's go inside and call New York, then. Your figure looks fine. I just wanted to make sure before I spoke to the editor. I'm afraid I don't know much about modeling. Oh, that's all right. I'll photograph you doing natural things, and then you won't be nervous. If I look nervous, it's only because I'm worried about that money. OK. Can I get dressed now? Sure. Operator, I'd like to place a person-to-person -person call to New York City. That's right. To Mr. Peterson, Judson 61723. Tell him it's Bunny Yeager, and it's very important. Gee, we're lucky he can talk to us. He's very busy. Hello, Mr. Peterson. This is Bunny Yeager. Yes, Bunny. How are you? Las Vegas. You lead an ideal life, I must say. Well, you should fly out. Do you good. Oh, it's beautiful here. I'm sure it is, Bunny. But with a magazine to publish every month, I wouldn't be able to relax very long without thinking about business. I know what you mean. And that's why I'm calling. I met a beautiful girl out here that I think you should use for your center spread and feature story. That's fine, Bunny. Send me some shots and I'll take a look at her. And advance before I see the proofs? Bunny, I respect your judgment as far as girls are concerned, but I still run a business. I can't pay you for something that I may not be able to use. What's the rush? You have bad luck at the casinos? No, it's not that. The girl needs the money right away. Oh, her figure is exceptional. I wish you could see her right now. Bunny, I'm sure she's very attractive. And I'll still play ball with you on the, at our usual terms, on two conditions. One, I want you personally to do the shots. You still do have your camera, don't you? Of course. I'd want to shoot it myself. You know I never go anywhere without my camera. I'll shoot it today and get it in the mail tonight. Sure. When do you think you can have the check here? And the second condition. I've been searching for a colorful picture story for next month's issue. Since you're already in Las Vegas, Find the most interesting things there and put it all on film for me. But, Mr. Peterson, I'm on a vacation. I wanted to shoot this one girl because she's so lovely, but that's a big order you're asking. I only have a few days. Sorry, Bunny, but those are the conditions. You send me the proofs and I'll send you the money, okay? Okay, Mr. Peterson, but could you do me one more favor? When you receive the proofs, could you wire us the money the same day for sure? Oh, thank you. Yes, I'll get started right away. OK, bye. Do you want to get started now? Oh, it's more complicated than that. Now I have to do a whole spread on Las Vegas and get the proofs to New York before we can get any money. I thought you wanted to take pictures of me now. The whole layout will take a long time, won't it? Well, he knew I was in a spot, and he took advantage of it. Don't worry, we'll get everything done before Jack gets here. I hope so. Oh, now it'll take a day or two to get organized. I'll call you tomorrow. Right now, I've got some tall explaining to do to Bud. But isn't there another way, a quicker way, maybe? Oh, OK, I'll speak to you tomorrow. All right. Hello, this is Bunny Yeager. I just got in from Miami Beach, and I wonder if I could use your place as a location for some photographs. Oh, well, uh, it's for a magazine spread. There'd be some nudes, semi-nudes, bikinis, you know. Well, oh, I understand. That's all right. OK, goodbye. Operator, let me have 378-4525. Mr. Wright? Hello, this is Bunny Yeager. From Miami Beach. Yes. I've been having so many problems trying to find locations to shoot. I wonder if you could help me. 
Well, you know, a uh, swimming pool for nudes and semi-nudes. You can? Oh, that's wonderful. Thanks so much. Where do I go? Fine. I'll be right over. Thank you. Goodbye. Bunny had accepted a pretty big assignment without considering the fact that she wasn't known here as much as she was in her hometown. I had a few contacts, and they put me in touch with some people who could help her. Finding beautiful girls to photograph is no easy job anywhere, and Las Vegas is no exception, even though it attracts the most beautiful girls in the world. The hotels pay good salaries for showgirls, and when a girl has danced four shows every night, she feels more like sleeping during the day than being exposed to the critical eye of a camera. As it turned out, Bunny wasn't completely unknown in Las Vegas, and interest began to spread. It began to look as though we had things running smoothly when we met for lunch. I again told Bunny about my gambling ability, this time with one-armed bandits, the slot machines which are found in nearly every establishment in Las Vegas. Maybe I don't have the greatest instincts for gambling, but I knew I could be very helpful to Bunny when it came to finding interesting locations that would be representative of the Las Vegas area. Bunny arrived back at the motel and noticed a very attractive girl sunning herself by the pool. Because she'd met other girls in a similar manner and helped them start modeling, she introduced herself and left her card with her. The girl was flying home to New Orleans the same day, but was interested, saying she might call Bunny if she came to Miami. Bunny keeps a current file on girls, so if she ever receives a call from one, she can remember where they met and what she looks like. The publicity man was as good as his word. Two showgirls were waiting for Bunny when she returned to her room. We knew the next few days would be hectic because Peggy needed the money as soon as possible. So Bunny wasted no time in posing and photographing the girls. She was expecting me at any minute to take her location hunting, and she hadn't spoken to Bud since breakfast, and I wondered if he'd understand. Even though Bunny had allowed herself to be talked into working, she didn't want to ruin his vacation. As Bunny worked with the first girl, she began to realize she'd get some excellent nude studies in Las Vegas. Even though this first girl was not an experienced photographer's model, she had poise and charm from working in front of audiences as a showgirl. Because she makes a living by displaying her physical beauty, she was not shy about posing. She did seem a bit unsure of herself at times, however. Instead of following a set routine as she did in the stage show each night, here she had to listen to Bunny's directions while posing. Modeling is not an easy profession for a girl. It's hard work to look attractive under hot lights for several hours at a time, knowing the camera may click at any instant, and that picture may be the deciding factor in getting the next job.
toe. Good. Now twist your top this way. A little more. Good. All right, let the gown slip off. That's fine. Now, cock your head this way. Put your hand up to you. That's it. Fold it. Good. All right, you can go now. Bunny has made it a rule never to allow anyone to watch while she photographs the girls. In some cases, there may be nothing wrong with it, but she's found that a girl is more at ease with no one looking at her, and the resulting pictures are prettier and show the model at her best. I was late in coming to pick Bunny up, and it gave her a better chance to work with the girls. The second girl must have posed before other than the feature act she does in one of the shows in town. One thing was certain. Peterson, the magazine editor in New York, was going to get more than his money's worth on this job. Bunny had been impressed with the spectacle of Hoover Dam when she and Bud stopped there on their way into Las Vegas. Our next step was to make arrangements for a boat. I knew a private owner at the Lake Mead Marina who was willing to help me. knowledge of the vicinity and its people was a great help in acquiring locations which would photograph well as backgrounds for posing Peggy 
and at the same time provide authenticity for the entire layout. Twin Lakes Lodge, situated at the outskirts of downtown Las Vegas, afforded a rustic setting which would complement Peggy's curl next door quality. I think we drove more than 150 miles before we got back to the motel where we found Bud waiting with more girls to be photographed. was around, Bunny wouldn't have to worry about me bursting into the room while she was shooting. Bud had always been a little amused by the way Bunny protects the models, but he respects her attitude. So while Bunny was shooting, I told Bud all about Las Vegas. Because of the rush to get the money for Peggy, we were holding all the film until the layout was complete. Then Peterson could have it developed in his dark room and know exactly how the pictures would reproduce in the magazine. Of course, with all my connections, I had a friend who worked in the laboratory in Las Vegas who could develop the film. But Bunny claimed there was too much at stake to take any chances. difficult sometimes to keep from hurrying through a shooting session, especially in the case of Dodie. She was in as much of a hurry as Bunny was and became a little tense before they finished. Bunny knew she had an important engagement, but she also wanted her pictures to be relaxed and natural. That's right. Let the negligee fall off your shoulder. Feet apart. That's right. Now, turn around the other way. I know you have to go now, so you can get dressed. So is it all right to come in now, Bunny? Sure. I'm sorry I had to keep you waiting so long, Dodie, but it just couldn't be helped. Maybe Charlie will drive you down to the club so you won't be late. Oh, I'd be delighted to, Bunny. That is, if you trust me. Listen, Peggy's been waiting to see you. Well, why didn't you come on up, Peggy? Bud said I should, but I didn't want to interrupt while you were taking pictures. Are you ready to take the pictures of me now? Well, Peggy, I'm going to shoot you tomorrow. We'll do the nude shots in a private home, and we'll do the sightseeing shots at the locations we looked at today. Bunny, what's taking so long? You told me I'd have the money in a day or two, and Jack will be here soon. Peggy, you're forgetting I had to agree to do a complete layout on Las Vegas to get Mr. Peterson to accept you. 
I realize it's taking a long time, but there's only one way to do the job right. You do want to look good, don't you? Yes, of course, but I'm worried about the money. I realize that, Peggy. And if I didn't understand how you feel, I wouldn't be doing this. But right now, I'm worried about getting the shots done right and getting the proofs approved in New York and... Excuse me. I'm sorry, Bud. I didn't mean to upset her. Oh, that's all right. She's not really upset. It's just from all this running around, she's tired. Listen, you're going with us today, aren't you? Charlie has a new secret plan. Now, he won't tell us anything about it, but it's going to be interesting. I've caused you people enough trouble. Frankly, you're here on your vacation, and I, I'll pass tonight. Don't worry about it. We'll call you in two hours. Okay, sure. Uh Plans for the day included a rodeo at Twin Lakes Lodge. Bunny was amazed to find out the cowboys and bronc riders were only 13 to 16 years old. They were supervised by adults, but once that chute opens, there's nobody supervising except the wild horse. Bunny said if she had a son in that arena, she couldn't stand to watch. I guess it's different when kids grow up in the West. Everyone forgot how tired they were in the excitement of the afternoon. For once, Bunny hadn't taken her camera along, but she should have. She could have gotten wonderful shots of Peggy, who was radiant. Of course, Bud was happy she didn't have the camera, but he still jokingly complained every time she went off leaving him alone too much. I think she didn't want Peggy to feel that she was upset with her. And besides, I'm not sure she trusted Peggy in my company. afternoon was carried into the evening with several hundred people participating in a torchlight parade around the grounds of Twin Lights. Bud seemed content to be a spectator, although I think he was amused by the antics of Bunny and Peggy. They made quite a hit at the lodge and wore themselves out getting involved in nearly every activity throughout the evening. The lights and fascination of downtown Las Vegas and the Strip are sure to appeal to one side of everyone's nature. But that night at the lodge made us realize how much fun it can be to participate in entertainment that's not served up on a glittering neon platter with a dollar sign on it. I finally gave up the parade and wandered off with a cowgirl type. I really don't know what she saw in me. Maybe it's because I'm a little different. Peggy had attracted a crowd of admirers from among the lifeguard staff, and they were busy showing off for her.
Well, I finally unwound and went back to the table to talk with Bud. So when he and Bunny were ready to go, they woke me up and sent me to look for Peggy. You know, that Charlie's a pretty nice guy. I had a lot of fun tonight. Oh, I guess he's all right. I still haven't made my mind up about him yet. The way he's always trying to get a look at the girls. Well, that's only natural. If men didn't like to look at pretty girls now and then, he'd be out of business. And if I didn't like to look at a pretty girl all the time, I never would have married you. Oh, honey, that's sweet of you to say that. Gee, you've been so understanding on this trip. Believe me, I didn't plan things this way. It's just that when Peggy asked me, I couldn't turn her down. And then one thing led to another, and, oh, here I am working again. Seems like every time we have any time to spend together, I mess things up finding a new girl or thinking up a story idea? Well, I'll admit I'd rather have more time with you, honey. But if you weren't the kind of girl you are, so full of ideas and so many things to do, I guess I just wouldn't love you so much. I want to thank you for handling the situation this afternoon when I lost my patience. I'm glad you suggested Peggy come along. It made more fun with the four of us. Oh, that was easy. I knew she wanted to come. Gee, honey, you're so good for me. I do such crazy things. If I didn't have you, I couldn't stay on an even keel. Early the next morning, Bunny photographed two more showgirls. We knew it was going to be a rough day because we had to shoot the major portion of the layout on Peggy, which meant a lot of work traveling. It had taken Bunny three days to do this job. That is, if she finished with Peggy today. Under normal circumstances, she might spend as much as two weeks photographing only one model, moving from one location to another to find just the right setting for that particular girl. Then maybe only one picture would be used in a magazine and the other shots of the girl would go on file in Bunny's studio. In an hour session, Bunny might shoot 50 or 60 good pictures, relying on some of them to be right for the layout. Hold that. Ma? Fine. Now, pull the gown behind you a little bit. Put your hands on your hips. Elbows back. That's it. Look right into the camera. Hold it. These two girls had gotten up much earlier than usual for this modeling job. We were reluctant to ask them to pose so early after having worked nearly all night in a musical review, but they understood the rush we were in to get the shots and were there right on time, ready to work. 
Luckily, the girls were cooperative as well as attractive, and the morning went smoothly. Bunny was very fortunate to get so many girls with good figures on such short notice to complete the layout on Las Vegas nudes. I was positive now that Mr. Peterson would like the pictures. Look over your shoulder at me. No, let's change that. Face the front again. That's good. Hold that. That's cute. All right, put your hand on your hip. When Bunny finished with the other girls, Peggy and I were waiting for her, and we started photographing Peggy on the locations that we'd picked out. When Bunny first asked Peggy if she wanted the job, she was hesitant because she'd never modeled before. From past experiences, Bunny remembered many girls who became nervous and shy when they faced a camera for the first time. But Peggy was perfectly at ease and just as radiant as the day before at the rodeo. We had discussed the locations and what Peggy should wear at each one, so there was no time wasted once we got there. Peggy had brought along a lot of cute costumes for posing, and I had to admire her for her sincere attitude toward a job she'd never done before. If she wanted to make a career of modeling, there's no reason why she couldn't go right to the top. Once at Lake Mead, I stayed at the marina while Peggy and Bunny rode to Hooper Dam on my friend's boat. Peggy took the opportunity to brush up on her water skiing during the trip over, and Bunny took that opportunity to shoot some action stills for the layout. When they got to the dam, they settled down to work, and Bunny found that no matter what the setting, Peggy photographed beautifully. Her hair had been dampened while she was skiing, so they improvised by tying a scarf around her head. The wind was blowing and threatened to mess her hair up anyway. From a photographer's standpoint, the scarf was a good touch. Like changing costumes and locations, it affords the viewing audience a different look at the subject. Bunny realized she was using more film than necessary because every shot of Peggy was a winner. A beautiful model and fantastic outdoor scenery. It's easy to look into the viewfinder of the camera and keep right on shooting. The more I got to know Peggy, the more I began to wonder what her husband was like. Peggy was such a sweet girl that I couldn't help thinking Jack must be a very narrow-minded person to want to squelch her personality. It was pleasant on the lake, and Peggy wanted to ski some more, but we still had a lot of shooting to do at the private home. The shots on location pretty well covered the outdoorsy side of the picture story. Now Bunny needed a series of glamour shots, more intimate and alluring. These shots would be the test for Peggy to see if she could uncover that side of her personality for the camera. Right. 
you want to be standing or sitting? That's fine, just the way you are. Hold it. Good. All right, uh, turn it over to the side. Twist a little. Take the glass in your hand. A little higher. All right. Try your hands behind your head. Now bend your left knee. All right, let's try a few more now. How would you like me to stand, buddy? Uh, just the way you are. That's it. Bend your knee. Separate your leg a little. That's it. That looks good. Let's try it with one strap down. Not too much. Just like that. Sultry. Tip your head a little. A little. That's it. Let's show a little more bosom. All right. Sultry. Good. All right. Now cock your head the other way. All right, Peggy, get on the couch. On your knees. Now, on your knees. Let the gown fall off your shoulder a little bit. the wall. Is that okay? Is this okay? Oh, that's fine, Peggy. Hold it. Good. All right, now, the same angle, but cock your head a little more. This side? Fine. All right, that'll be enough for now. such a hurry. Oh, he went to the airport for the film. Oh, it looks like I've got a couple of tired girls on my hands. Suppose you make me down the lounge. We'll have a little refreshment. Yes, I could use a drink now. Let us freshen up first. All right, I'll give you 15 minutes. Now that all the work was done, we decided to make a night of it, and we were able to see some of the famous entertainment at several of the big hotels. I wasn't particularly interested in the shows, but I'd really begun to like Bunny and Bud by this time, and I didn't want them wandering around Las Vegas alone. And I didn't really feel like wandering around alone myself. Money arrived yet? I'm on my way 
leave the airport and Jack's arriving early. No, it didn't come yet. I spoke to Mr. Peterson early this morning and he did mail it as he agreed. But it's just not here. Could you wait for it? Oh, I can't. I'm late now. Well, why don't you go on ahead and stall Jack somehow and then you can come and get it. Well, I say, he asked me how much money I have left. I'll tell you what, you leave your purse with me, and then you'll have an excuse. And, um, tell him you left it here by accident. Okay. Okay? See you later. All right. Reception. I've missed you. Oh, honey, I've missed you too. But we'll make up for that. I'll get it. Oh, my dry clean. How much is it? Eight selling it. Jack, can you lend me ten dollars? I seem to have misplaced my purse somewhere. Here, keep the change. Thank you, sir. What do you mean you misplaced your purse? It's not around here? Oh, I remember. I must have left it at Bunny's this morning. Bunny's? Who's Bunny? Bunny Yeager, you know, the photographer from Miami Beach. We met she and her husband last year at a charity ball. Oh, yeah. But why don't you just call her and let's make sure? Oh, not now, darling. I've missed you so much and I want to be with you. Bunny, we'll be together. We'll go and have dinner and catch a show and come back early. Wonderful. But first, call her. I don't want to call her now. Call her right now. Okay. Dudley 4, 6432, please. Hello? Hello, Bunny. Jack's here. Oh, Peggy. No, the package hasn't arrived from New York yet, but it is on its way. I spoke to Peterson again. I seem to have lost my purse. Did I leave it over there this morning? Of course, the purse is here, but the money isn't. Peggy, I just told you, Peterson said he sent the money, and it should be here any minute. We're waiting for it. Yes, fine. Oh, we'll be over to pick it up. We're leaving now. Bye. Peggy, don't come over yet. The money's not... Peggy? Peggy? Hello? She hung up. I guess he's coming over right now. <laughs> well, what's so funny? Oh, Peggy. She arrives in Las Vegas, loses $1,000 at the dice tables, and her husband hates gambling. Dead set against it, and she's bringing him over here, and you don't have the money yet? I'll see you later. No guts, huh? Now look, get this straight. This chick has never done anything for me, so why should I stick my neck in the noose? A special delivery letter from Miss Bunny Yates. Yeah, I'll take it. Okay. Got change for quarter? No, sir, I don't. Uh, carry change, fellas. A check? Oh, I didn't think about that. Now what do I do? Yeah. Here. Endorse it. I'll get it cashed. I thought you didn't want your head in the noose. Listen, if I don't use my connections to get that cash, where else are you going to get that much money that quick? Hurry up, hurry. And get back as fast as you can. All right. Oh, I hope he makes it. Well, what's the matter, bud? Well, what's to prevent him from having that check cashed and keep right on going? We don't know who he is, what his last name is, how to reach him or anything. Oh. I didn't think about that. You better go, too. All right. Well, 
Billy's gone. I guess we're just going to have to trust him. How long has he been gone now? Oh, it's only been ten minutes. He certainly wouldn't have time to do anything by now. Hi, Bunny, Bud. You remember Jack? They've been taking care of me, honey, while you've been away. Hi. Hello. Won't you sit down? Well, thank you. It's so good to see someone from home. Makes you feel like you're not on a desert island out here. A lot more fun when you have someone you know around. Mm -hmm. Well, did you get your business all straightened up? Good enough until I can get back there. I realize you people are on your vacation and we hate to bother you. We really came by to pick up Peggy's purse. Hey, why don't all of us go and have dinner tonight? There must be a nice place around here where we can get some good food and just get better acquainted. Well, actually, we don't know the town too well, but we do have a good friend here. He ought to be able to find a nice restaurant for us to dine in. How's that sound to you girls? Sure. Well, good. That's settled now. Hey, I got the... I got the... I got the damnedest feeling I've seen you somewhere before, sir. Your face is very familiar. Do you live in Las Vegas? I'm sure I've seen you around somewhere before. I'm Charlie. Uncle Charlie, they call me here. Now, I know everything that's going on in the strip, so if you need any action in town, just let me know and I can get it for you. I know everything that's going on. Isn't that right, bud? Huh? Right? This is the friend I was telling you about. Well, I'm Jack Moreno, and we've never met before. I've only been to Las Vegas once before, and it's been three years ago. <laughs> well, I've never been to Miami Beach, so maybe we don't know each other, but I tell you what, I got a horse running in the 5th of San Anita that pays 7 to 1 odds. Uh, it's a great chance. Listen, it's a setup. I know it's all... No, thanks. I don't gamble. Well, there must be something I can do for you while you're in Las Vegas. Anything at all that you need. Just let me know anything. Actually, there is something you can do for me. We're all going to dinner tonight. Perhaps you can suggest a place. Yeah, just the place. Greatest food you've ever tasted. The greatest food. Well, in that case, if it's so good, why don't you come along with us? Well, I'd be very happy to. Thank you. Fine, fine. Honey, don't forget your purse. Bunny, my purse? Oh, I almost forgot, too. I put it away. So how's your vacation been going? Oh, great. Charlie's been looking after us, showing us the town. It's a real wild place. See many shows? Oh, yeah, the best shows. They've got everything here. They generally do. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Honey, here's the ten dollars I owe you. Can break a hundred. Thanks, baby. Later. <laughs> Thanks, Bunny, very much. Hello oh, there. Come in. Miss Yeager. I'm Miss Yeager. You must be Connie. Yes. Have a seat over there, and I'll be with you in just a moment. I'm photographing Connie for a magazine layout. Mm-hmm. Well, we won't keep you any longer. Come on. Nice seeing you again, Bunny. Ciao. Come on. See you tonight, Dave. Right. So long, Charlie. So long, Jack. Wow. I thought we'd never pull that off. For a minute, I didn't think you'd even come back with the money. Come on, you might remember what I said about my pride. I'll see you at 8 o'clock. You really hurt his feelings this time. He didn't even notice her. Oh, speaking of her, I have some work to do. Well, listen, that's all right. I have something I want to take care of anyway. I'll see you after a while. Okay, honey. The suspense of Jack's arrival and the money coming from New York, Bunny had nearly forgotten about Connie. She brought her costume with her from the show she was appearing in. Bunny had been looking for an exotic dancer for a commission job in Miami, and Connie was perfect. Of course, it was too late to include her in the Las Vegas nude for Mr. Peterson, but she was fine for the other job, and she'd make more money doing it, too. Turn, uh, turn your head to the wall. That's right. 
right. Look over your shoulder. Great. Now, hold that scarf back a little bit. You're shielding your face. That's it. That's it. Smile. All right. Action again. Pull it. Great. Pull it. Again. Now bend your back a little. That's it. Pull it. All right, now hold the scarf up and turn to the side. That's it. Okay? Good. Now twist a little more. Mm-hmm. That's it. Fine. Thanks a lot. Well, Charlie, you did it again. The dinner was delicious. It certainly was. <laughs> well, that's the kind of reaction I like to see. Happy people. I appreciate that. Mr. Marino, if there's anything else that you'd like to have in Las Vegas, just don't hesitate to ask me. <laughs> Well, Charlie, I have that feeling that whether I ask Be you careful, or not... Be careful, Jack. Be sensitive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bunny, that girl that you photographed in your room today, is she considered a good type for that sort of work? Oh, yes. Bunny photographs quite well. She has a good face and a good figure. I admit she's really attractive, but I think that my wife is even more so. I don't see why you haven't used her. I say that was so funny. Okay. Okay. Honey, we're not laughing at you. There's something I've got to explain. Just promise me one thing. Don't interrupt me until I've told you the whole story. Is it a deal? What are you talking about? Listen, honey, I was so lonely waiting for you to come to Las Vegas. All I did was sit by the pool and go to my room and order room service. So I got bored waiting for you, honey, and I, I went to the gambling casino only to gamble a few bucks, and I started winning at first. And all of a sudden, before I realized it, I lost the thousand dollars you gave me, all the expense money. Is that all? I didn't want to deceive you, honey, but I know how you feel about gambling, and I just couldn't let you know I lost that thousand dollars. So I ran into Bunny and Bud, and I asked Bunny to lend me the money. She didn't have a thousand dollars, so she offered me a modeling job, and she called New York and got a, an assignment to do a feature story on me. And that's what happened, honey, and I feel terrible about the whole thing. It doesn't sound so terrible. But it is terrible. I gambled, and I knew you'd be upset about my posing for a magazine. I was only kidding when I suggested that you pose for Bunny, but I'm not upset. Don't worry, honey, I'll never do it again. I'd like to see the pictures when they come out, Bunny. How about it? I can take care of that. I'll have you see the picture on the mail away. Well, everybody's just a little bit too cozy for me. Suppose we have a go at the dice table. But, Bunny, Jack, I'll just watch the rest of you. Me too. I was feeling pretty good and showing off for Jack and Peggy's benefit. But when it came down to betting, I couldn't forget that Bunny had been winning by betting against me. So I asked her for the money in my account, which was $100. When she gave it to me, I bet according to my system, and she bet against me. I was just ready to roll the dice when I reconsidered and changed the bet. I bet against myself. Everybody watched carefully as I rolled and I won. Same or I do. would have if I hadn't changed the bet. So now, everybody lost. But everybody had a good laugh. All bets, please. 
while the rest of them went off someplace, I decided to stay at the table. Now my system was working. All right, miss. And besides, it looked like there might be a little action. I think Bud and Bunny were pleased, though a little surprised, to see me the next morning as they drove away from the motel. But I developed a genuine feeling for them and wanted to say goodbye. I don't think their vacation turned out exactly as planned, but maybe it's better this way. They did have a wonderful time together. They've met some new friends, like me. And besides, I think Bunny Yeager loves her work so much, she couldn't be idle for two weeks anyway. Uh.